Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. John in the Wilderness for this 15th Sunday after Pentecost. It's wonderful to be gathered with you today. I'm Father Josh Stevens, rector here. If you are new or you're visiting, it's really great to have you. We'd love it if you'd fill out a card that you can find in your pew there and put it in the offering plate, and we'll be in touch with you uh, in the week that is ahead. Um, this week, we have a couple of special things going on uh, in terms of announcements uh, that'll make the service a little bit longer. So I went ahead and typed up uh, some things for the next couple of weeks for you to take home with you. Uh, don't get used to this. It won't happen every Sunday, but we are capable of it. Uh, so I hope you'll take that home uh, and see the newsletter, the voice, and the weekly email to, to be able to look a little bit farther out and to see some of the things that are coming up. Uh, but we thought this would be a good way to uh, keep things moving along today. Um, and so to that end, uh, as you might have seen on the, uh, uh, the banner outside, we're beginning our stewardship look into next year. Uh, around this theme, Growing by Sharing God's Gifts. And we have two members of our stewardship committee, Meg and Jerry Holt, who are going to come up and say a little bit about uh, the next month and beyond as we look to share the abundance of God's creation and God's gifts here at St. John. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Father. Good morning. Good morning. Gosh, what a special treat this is for us because uh, we go to the 845 service most of the time, so we don't get to see many of you folks as often as we'd like. So this is this is a real treat for us. Um, as Father Josh mentioned, uh, we're on the stewardship committee and we were asked to introduce it. Um, our theme again is uh, inter um, growing uh, by sharing God's gifts. And uh, I have to say that at the breakfast this morning, if you all attended, um, again, I was just reinforced, it, it was reinforced to me um, how many giving and caring and sharing people we have in our parish, uh, down to the young people who were in there cooking and cleaning and serving. And it was clear to me that our spirit of giving at St. John is being passed down to the next generation. And it just thrilled my heart uh, for such just an ordinary thing as, as breakfast. Uh, but to see the, the, the spirit moving was, was quite, uh, quite moving for me. Um, so a couple things, uh, kind of logistical. Um, as we said, we're kicking off the stewardship campaign. And as most of you know and are familiar with, that's the opportunity for us to reflect on, in this case, reflect on God's gifts and how we want to continue as a parish and as individuals to share those gifts. Um, the obvious one that everybody always says, oh, here we go, it's the money ask, you know, is the financial. And that's a, certainly a very important component of our stewardship campaign. Um, this church is, as we all love it, you know, it doesn't run on its own. But we also want to highlight this year, and as a committee we talked about this, just the abundance of treasure and uh, time, treasure, and talent that we have at St. John in the Wilderness. And time and talent of which, to Jerry's point this morning, you saw um, being exhibited so exuberantly in the uh, parish breakfast. Whether you're packing backpack lunches, um, packing food for the uh, feeding the hungry, whether you're working in the garden at Canuga that goes to our community, whatever the case may be, there is a tremendous amount of uh, time and talent that goes into our outreach here, as well as our inreach, uh, altar guild, etc. So uh, to that point, you'll see some things uh, throughout the next couple months uh, related to the campaign and then ongoing. And one of the things we're going to do is we're going to put cards in the pews, uh, like the like the newcomer welcome cards, where we ask you to uh, reflect on the way you give your time and talent um, and write that down and put it in the offering plate and have it brought to the altar during church each week so that we it's ever we're ever mindful that it's not just about the financial uh, component of the stewardship campaign but instead is very much about the time and talent that many of you give and we hope will continue to do so um, the other activities you'll see other people speaking and uh, you should have received your, your stewardship package in the mail if you haven't you should get it soon and if you don't get one please contact the office you can swing by and get one or we can have one mailed to you um, and all this will culminate on October 15 with our celebration event at Canuga Conference Center where we will come
come together to celebrate the giving spirit of St. John and reflect on the seeds that we planted last year and then those seeds of giving that we will be planting this year going forward. And lastly, uh, you all, or most of you may have received the little blue box for the thank offering. And uh, if you didn't get one, we encourage you to, uh, to pick one up on your way out. It's just a way to uh, remind us daily uh, about the gifts that we've received and uh, how we can share those gifts and, and grow uh, our church and grow the body of Christ. Uh, again, uh, thank you for... Oh, Linda has an example there. If you haven't seen the little box, now you have. And uh, be sure you take one. Okay. Oh, at that conference, at that event. Oh, good. Thank you, Linda. So we'll be collecting that day on October 15th at the event. Yeah, And again, uh, we just ask that you prayerfully consider your own gift. It's a personal decision. We recognize that. Um, and we thank you so much for supporting the work that, that we all do. And um, thanks. Thank you. I told Meg and Jerry they could leave for the 11 o'clock. They didn't have to stay for two services. Although the sermon was good. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't set the expectations. <laughs> Yeah, I grabbed those UTO boxes, too. I know Linda likes to use her as her uh, swear jar for the next uh, month and a half, but you can use them for... Oh, okay. <laughs> um, it's so good to be with y'all today. I'm looking forward especially to our uh, blessing in the choir after the piece here. So to that end, let's continue as we stand and sing this great hymn, hymn at the Lamb's High Feast we sing. Thank you, welcome.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to You all hearts are open, all desires known, and from You no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of Your holy name, that we may perfectly love You and worthily magnify Your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. trust in you with all our hearts, for as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Exegel. You, mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity. But their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, As I live, Says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? The word of the Lord. Please read together the portions of Psalm 26 found in your bulletin. We will read responsively by whole verse. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Make me go in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. Turn away the reproach which I dread because your judgments are good. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. 
Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery or licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. to them, 
tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on, loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Here are a few real-life scenarios. These are not hypothetical. A local produce stand puts up a huge political sign during an election year, leaving customers and neighbors who disagree with their politics frustrated and confused, so many begin to boycott the business. A 12-year-old boy at a local school can't take it anymore, so one day he brings a handgun to school and while about 35 students are gathered in the gym before the day starts, he takes it out and shoots another student. At a study group, one church member finds what another church member says to be prejudicial, causing alarms to go off in that person's head. Heart rates increase in the room, stress rises, and the one person begins thinking, someone has to call this person out. That's not okay. A missile strike in central Ukraine kills one person and injures over 70 others, leaving seven residential buildings, among others, badly damaged. Aren't conflicts fun? In fact, let's do a little informal survey, shall we? Raise your hand if you kind of enjoy conflict. Thank you, at least one or two of you should enjoy it statistically. <laughs> How about this question? Raise your hand if you have ever heard someone reference or if you're familiar in any way with the Bible verse we heard at the end of our gospel reading when Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. It's a lot of hands. Raise your hand if you knew that when Jesus said that, he was talking about church conflict. I didn't either. <laughs> Why would Jesus say that he shows up when we take the time to deal with disagreement? Here's why. <clears throat> we get baptized into a kingdom where you don't owe anyone anything except to love one another. In fact, we become agents of that love. Or as Paul puts it elsewhere, we join in this new way of being, this entirely new creation that sprouted on that first Easter Sunday with Christ emerging from the tomb. So Paul writes this, spells it out beautifully in 2 Corinthians 5, when he says, Christ died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, he writes, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All of this is from God, who reconciled us to himself in Christ, and then has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. 
So think about this for a second. The, the longing of God's heart and the actions of God's hands in Christ are all about reconciliation. We are restored to God in Christ, and then we are given that ministry ourselves of reconciliation. We become ambassadors for him on a mission to reconcile. God's work in Christ is not just about you and God, in other words. It's also about you and your neighbor, you and your acquaintances, you and your family, and especially you and your enemies. We have a reconciling God. The will of God is bent towards mercy and forgiveness and justice and reconciliation. So the message of our gospel reading today is that Christ shows up when we make the effort to be in right relationship with one another, even in disagreement. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That's Christ's message for his church. And yet, we hear this passage about what to do if your brother or sister sins against you as some kind of New York Times advice column. No, this is deeper. This is an invitation to share in the reconciling work of God and the church. And this community, this body of Christ, is where we are to learn how to be in relationship with people who annoy us or offend us. Or disagree with us. If a member of the church offends you, Jesus doesn't say, tell your friends all about it. He doesn't say, complain on social media. He doesn't say, send an email. He says, have a conversation with them directly and do some soul searching, some listening. Consult the wise folks if need be, but expect that Jesus will show up when we take on that reconciling work. Here in Christian community, we find God pouring out that love among us and making us whole. It can be hard work, but we must remember that Christ shows up in it, and it changes us. The monks like to say, like stones in a bag, we become smooth. Our rough places get smoothed out in community with each other. While the church is this incubator for reconciliation, our ministry of reconciliation continues right out these doors. Can you imagine the division, pain, and violence that could be avoided if we would risk talking directly to someone who has hurt us? I like to call it kitchen table justice. Because when kids argue or when there's a, an argument with your spouse, at some point, the people who have hurt each other have to sit down across from each other. And rather than talking about each other, we have to talk to each other and see what we can do to make it right. There's a whole movement of justice that looks a lot like the kingdom of God, which communities are embracing. And a lot of it's based on this passage right here, Matthew 18. It's called restorative justice. In retributive justice, which is what our criminal justice system usually looks like, it examines what rules have been broken. Right? That's the question. What law has been broken? And it finds out who broke that rule. And then it tries to apply a fitting punishment for the crime. But in restorative justice, it asks what harm has been done. And the only person who can really answer that question is the person who's been harmed. So then two people are sitting across from each other, like at a kitchen table. And the offender is to ask the victim what he or she needs to do to make this right for them, to repair the harm. That seems a lot like what Jesus was getting at in our gospel today. Because it's where healing and reconciliation can happen. And that's our work, that's our ministry as followers of this reconciling Jesus. In the kingdoms of this world, it, the goal if someone offends you, is to make them pay for it, or to at least give them a piece of your mind. But in God's kingdom, the goal in conflict is for God's reconciling love to take root, for the relationship to change, sure, but to grow, to grow in grace. 
We get to exercise these muscles here as a church all the time in big ways and small. One of the most powerful examples of ordinary Christian people living out God's reconciling love happened after that terrible tragedy in Lancaster, Pennsylvania in 2007. Many of you will remember what happened there when a young man did the unthinkable. He went into an Amish schoolhouse, held hostage many kids, shooting ten of them and ultimately killing five girls and then himself. It's the stuff of a parent's worst nightmare. But after the shooting, the Amish families who had lost so much reached out to the family of the man who hurt them. They brought them food. They offered them forgiveness. They gave them money for his widow and his kids. They attended his funeral. All of their time living out this message of Matthew 18 meant that they knew how Christ could show up in conflict and in disagreement if we are willing to show up too. I I recently pulled up this story again to recall the details and I found that the ripple effects of forgiveness and reconciliation were still going out. God's healing touch still Rippling out. The killer's mother, who thought she could never face her neighbors again, often she found herself struggling to accept the forgiveness that was being shared with her. She would think about the girls who had survived the shooting with life altering injuries. One day she asked the family of a neighbor, they had a little girl named Rosanna who was wheelchair bound and eats through a feeding tube because of what happened. She asked if she could visit with her each week to help feed her and to brush her hair and to bathe her. So there it happens among cornfields and hay barns that the mother of a killer helps care for one of his, her son's victims. There the reconciling love of God is on the loose, overcoming the violence and the fear and and the estrangement. I wonder wonder what Christ will do with us. I wonder how he will show up to heal and to reconcile when we meet with those who have hurt us. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault while the two of you are alone. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah.
sobre o Filho de Paz. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord that God's will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. Be with your church across time and space that our divisions may cease and that the love we share with each other and all people will bring Christ to the world. We offer thanks for those who minister in this place for our staff, Kevin, DeWitt, Eric, Stacy, Sarah, Marta, Olga, and Miguel. For our choir and music ministries, our stewardship committee, our flower guild, our funeral reception ministry, and all who serve this parish family. Lord, in your mercy. Here. Guide our clergy, Josh, Ian, and Sandy, and our associate clergy, Joyce, Patricia, and Stephen, and be with Jose, our bishop, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Lord, in your mercy. Here. Speak to the people of this land and all the nations that leaders can learn to serve, and that each of us can learn to listen to you as we love one another. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our enemies and those who wish us harm. Reconcile us to each other and grow in us a love for peace as only you can give. Lord, in your mercy. Inspire us to respond to the needs of the poor, the sick, the lonely, and the afraid. Help us to respect the dignity of every human being. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the needs of this parish family. We pray for Mary Shelton, who begins her ministry on our Diocesan Youth Council this month. We ask you to bring comfort and healing to those on our parish prayer list for Jan, Philip, Sean, Joanne, Dottie, Tom and Anna, Jean, John, Charles, Christopher, Emily and Gerald, Harold, Rebecca, Ben, Bonnie, Terry, Joanna, Nancy, Reed, Sandy, Loretta, the Schofield family, Elaine, Betsy, Cheryl, Joni, Carol, Rita, Charles, Jim, Susan, Tawana, Anne, Margaret, Lee, and Brian. Are there others? Lord, in your mercy, we commend to you all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. 
O God and Father of all, whose Son commanded us to love our enemies, lead them and us from prejudice to truth. Deliver them and us from hatred, cruelty, and revenge. And in your good time, enable us all to stand reconciled before you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, you confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace of the Lord. Please be seated. Unless you're the choir. <laughs> I'd like to invite our choir to come forward. We're going to offer some prayers of blessing and uh, to commission them for their ministry. If you can come and stand right here, and I'm going to stand over here so you can, you can face me. Ah, yes. That's right. Don't forget your bullets. And first, I'd also like to invite Ginger Corals to come forward. <laughs> Ginger has been a member of this singing group for a couple of minutes now. <laughs> for many years, uh, I guess perhaps the longest serving member of the choir. Uh, and uh, you've done an amazing ministry uh, with your heart, with your voice in this place. Um, you've led us in singing and praising God over the course of many services, many years, in fact. Uh, and we are grateful for you. And you're, a, you're an honorary emeritus member of the choir forever. And uh, DeWitt would like to offer you something in thanks for your amazing ministry in this place. She wanted to know if I had found her replacement. <laughs> irreplaceable. Irreplaceable. So uh, we wanted to we wanted to send you off with our love oh, and something so you can remember us. But Ginger is taking her retirement, and we want to say thank you from us. Yeah. <laughs> and we wish you good health and much happiness. Your seat is always there. Okay. <laughs> and your number. Okay. Which is ten. <laughs> as we think about offering our gifts here at the altar and, and stewardship over the course of our life as Christians, it's so fitting that we take a moment to commission our choir. Uh, who they offer their gifts every week as we gather to, to pray and to worship uh, together. I present to you these persons who serve as co choristers in this congregation. Will you offer your hearts and voices to the praise of God and in service to this parish family? I will. Come, let us sing to the Lord. 
Let us pray. O God, who inspired David the king both to write songs and to appoint singers for your worship, give grace to the choristers of this church that with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs they may sing and make music to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the name of God and of this congregation, I commission you as choristers for this parish And I bless you in your ministry of song in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. you. While he'd hate to steal any of the the spotlight, we are also this year uh, celebrating 10 years of ministry by Mr. DeWitt Sandman, our music director and organist. If you'd like to make a gift in gratitude for his work, you can do it to the Friends of Music Fund, which supports the concert series, which he organizes here at St. John. Uh, And I hope you'll join us next week also uh, for the first concert uh, for the the coming season, as four high school students from the Governor's School will be here uh, playing instruments 4 o'clock on Sunday. Father Ian? If you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by His glorious resurrection opened to us the way of life, the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise You, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of Your name.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us seek the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on Him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have led us to spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with guidance and sins of heart. Through Christ our Lord. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen.